In the last stream, we were working on upgrading our storage situation by unlocking and then crafting this simple storage network to allow us to access all of the items in all of our chests and all of our drawers from this one storage request table, which has already made us substantially faster at crafting and finding items. Also, in the last episode, we worked our way a little bit through the elite tech questline here. We unlocked silver and gold, we got our first electrum ingots, and we used, I believe, four blocks of electrum ingots to finally unlock the thermal expansion questline here. And the plan for today's stream is going to be to try and get at least one, but ideally multiple induction smelters and at least one, but potentially multiple pulverizers to allow us to substantially increase the efficiency of our ore processing system. Because right now we have multiple ores being smelted down in our jumbo furnace into one ingot. The worst example is like iron ore here. Right now it takes five iron ore to make one iron ingot. I think the same is true with uh, the newly unlocked gold and silver. It takes five gold ore to make one gold ingot. And with the induction smelter, that changes to give us quintuple the amount of ingots effectively, because instead of taking five gold ore to make one gold ingot, it takes one gold ore to make one gold ingot. And so just by running all the ores through the induction smelter, instead of the jumbo furnace, we're going to quintuple the amount of ingots that we get without having to upgrade our miners. The same is also true for things like lapis, coal, and redstone. Right now, if we look at redstone ore, we are currently running that through the jumbo furnace. It takes three redstone ore to get one redstone dust, whereas if we take one redstone ore and run it through the pulverizer, we get six redstone dust. I think the lapis is an even bigger gap. Right now, it's three lapis ore to one lapis lazuli, whereas in the pulverizer, one lapis gets you 12 lapis lazuli. Uh, and so if, essentially, just by running it through the pulverizer instead of the jumbo furnace, we're going to get 36 times as much lapis as we are currently getting. And we're already getting way too much lapis. If we look in here, we're at almost 2,000 lapis. We've almost filled this storage drawer here. And so these machines should be a huge upgrade for us. Before we start working on those, I have begun the process of kind of getting rid of this platform here. Obviously, some stuff is, uh, is still here. There's more work to be done, but I've moved some of the immersive engineering machines over to a new platform that I've made on the other side of the base. Now, real quick, before I head over there, I do want to craft some more LV wire coil, and I'm also going to get like a block of cobblestone and then maybe some more LV wire here because I do have something that I want to show people. And to do that, I do need uh, at least a couple of wires. So we'll take those. And just to be safe, we'll also take some uh, LV wire relays as well. Basically, I have built a uh, circular platform over on the other side of the base here, and I've raised it up from the ground a little bit. My plan is to do the same thing on all four sides. So we'll have like another little circular platform up on this side, the same is true over on the other sides. You'll notice I did also move the stone and the clay miners. Those are now over in the corner here, giving us access on all four sides to uh, what is eventually gonna be new platforms. And so over here, we have basically all of our immersive engineering stuff. We have our Cocoa we have our blast furnace, we have our bottling machine, and we have our metal press, which I have sunk down into the floor. I think it looks a little bit nicer when the, uh, the conveyor belt here is flush with the ground like this. Now, the reason I brought over these LV wire connectors is I want to show off this right here. So we have our kinetic dynamo with our windmill on the front of it. And then uh, if I, oh, we don't have any cobblestone over here. I kind of want to, uh, to do a bit of a nerd pole. Um, I did move the stone miner, although it looks like I haven't moved the stone draw so the stone draw should still be over here it is indeed let me grab a little bit of stone from here i think that's fine for now we don't actively need stone being produced we've got a ton of smooth stone and a ton of regular stone obviously we should get it back online at some point soon but uh, real quick i just want to show off what is uh, is going on up here so up at the top we have an lv wire connector is this a block it is let's do this we have an lv wire connector here that is then connecting to this LV wire relay. And then over here, we're using this block as a feed through block, as you can see at the top there of uh, the screen. And then that goes down, obviously connects to more LV wires and then connects to the bottling machine and the metal press. The way this works, and I wanna be careful here not to die when I fall down, but uh, the way this works is if you have an LV wire connector and you want to run it through a block, 
what you can do is you can put down two connectors like this onto a block. And then if you right click either one of these connectors with a hammer, it changes the middle block there to a feed through block. And then it allows you to connect this and this and now basically this connector is connected to this connector and so it runs the power straight through allowing you to run through without having to do like awful you know wiring situations where you try and run around the outside and then to the inside it's a, a whole thing but this is substantially nicer and makes it substantially easier to run power around now another thing here that you may have noticed is that we currently don't have any stairs going up to this area we've got this horrible cobblestone staircase quote unquote that isn't even made of cobblestone stairs the reason for that is that a mod that we have not yet unlocked is the framed blocks mod and if we unlock the framed blocks mod it's going to allow us to make stairs with custom textures kind of similar to the way that the framed drawers and the framed trim worked the framed trim allowed us to make trim and then texture it however we liked if we can get framed uh, blocks unlocked we can do the same thing with uh, a myriad of different blocks and also with custom stairs so we do have 12 tech books on top of that we do need to get four tin blocks four treated wood and a blank research paper that seems very doable we've got a ton of tin fantastic we can go ahead and craft up four blocks very easily and then from there we should i think just have everything already to make the uh, the framed research paper at which point boom and boom we can uh, claim this quest reward and now you'll see that we have got a lot more framed items available from the framed draw mod and specifically here i want to get some framed stairs basically everything from the framed blocks mod is made using these framed cubes these are super easy they are just planks and sticks and so we'll go ahead and make a bunch of those and then we can use those to make a bunch of stairs and then the idea here is that we can use our chipped smooth stone to make these look nicer the way this works you put the uh, stair down like this and then you just right click the texture that you want them to look like Nice, and that allows us to get uh, slightly nicer looking stairs than we currently have. Uh, speaking of which, I did also use a custom dark oak, and if you can quite see it over there, uh, these right here are dark oak logs, and much like with the uh, the glass table and the mason's table before it, if you want to uh, change the texture of your logs, you can make the carpenter's table here, and the carpenter's table gives you access to all of these different uh, woods, and uh, I assume you can also do the same thing with planks as well. You totally can. There's a bunch of uh, cool looking planks here that uh, we'll probably end up using at some point in the future, but that's just another table that uh, is not really that difficult to make. Uh, let me check the recipe real quick. I think it's just wood and stone maybe with a tiny bit of iron yeah just wood and iron actually so uh, super easy to make not a problem at all and so real quick i'm gonna make some more of these framed stairs i'm gonna put them down over by our new immersive engineering area and then we'll come back over and we'll see about getting our first thermal expansion machines to increase our ore processing production all right and not too long later we now have a bunch of framed stairs that have been textured with the uh, brick bordered smooth stone still don't connect like the textures don't connect here unfortunately but i think it does look nicer than having cobblestone stairs and i've thrown down some dark oak logs on the side here as well to uh, to complete the look and at this point we can go ahead and get rid of all of the excess cobblestone there to uh, to just leave the stairs that we want nice now real quick i know i said we were about to get started with the oil processing but i think before we get started with that we still have a food problem and while we can continue to manually produce wheat to make bread every now and again, as I mentioned in the last episode, I think it's going to make a lot more sense if we get something like a garden cloche to allow us to automatically produce basically an unlimited amount of any food item that we like. The garden cloche itself isn't too difficult to make. It requires treated wood, it requires glass, it requires one iron mechanical component, and then one incandescent light bulb, which is made in the engineer's workbench with the crafting components blueprint, which we already have, with uh, three paper, one glass, and one copper ingot. Paper we have, glass we have, and we've got a load more glass up here. Uh, I did use glass in the top of the uh, new building area, hence why we've got so much of it. And then it was just... Oh, the iron mechanical component. For that, we are going to need some more iron plates. I do think, real quick, can we do, I assume this doesn't work. Normally you can craft um, the engineer's hammer with an iron ingot to get an iron plate. I didn't think it would work given that we were given the metal press so early in the pack. The only problem with the new base design is that I do have to go quite a ways away to, uh, to get to my metal press, which is all the way up here. I am fairly certain though that we do have uh, some iron plates left in here. We do, they're in here, fantastic. That is the... The wrong machine i want them in there isaac i must have put the chests in uh, in the wrong place when i moved them over but we got some iron plates 
and uh, using that, we should be able to uh, to make some more iron mechanical components over in the engineer's workbench. So boom and boom, we can get the iron mechanical component and then boom, boom and boom, gets us the incandescent light bulb. And at that point, we should have basically everything that we need to make the garden cloche. We do, nice. So we'll put this down over in the immersive engineering area. Essentially, we can provide power to the top of this. That is not gonna be a problem. And then we put in dirt and the thing that we want to grow. People have suggested that potatoes are probably a good suggestion for us here. In fact, we can craft apples into berries and then berries into potatoes. I didn't know that. That's actually very interesting. We've got a ton of apples. The uh, The benefit of, uh, of doing this is that uh, we can then just cook the potatoes basically all at once in our jumbo furnace here to get us a ton of potatoes. We might not need the garden cloche because we do have so many apples coming in. I didn't realize up until now that it was so easy to make the... Um, the potatoes and these are just a better version of the apples because again they have that uh, extra saturation the apples here 1.5 saturation legs whereas these do uh, do three so they are just a, a more efficient way of doing things but uh, just to show how this works if we get some dirt here we can place the dirt in we can place the potato in like that and then we need to give this both power and water if i'm not mistaken i think this might use a continuous stream of water which could pose a problem for us let me go and see about setting this up and then we'll see if it does require continuous water it is possible to produce continuous water using the pump from immersive engineering the pump that we're using over here and the one that we're also using on our coke oven the way that it works though it does require power you'll notice right now we're not actually giving power to any of our pumps but they can receive power the way that you use power with this pump is by using it to pump fluids out of the world so if you wanted to uh, to pump out of a water source block you could do that by placing this over a renewable source block and giving it power people are also pointing out the aqueous accumulator is probably available to us now it totally is and this is actually a much better way of doing it and in fact we could probably get that going fairly soon i am thinking of putting another metal press on this side here because i want to have one for plates and one for gears so that in the future we can automate both of those without having to manually swap out the gear and plate mold and so for the time being let's go ahead and put the garden cloche down Maybe just like right here. That's not going to work though because there is an LV wire relay directly above it and we do need to be able to uh, to get into that. So instead though, if we go here, that probably would work. Let's put down our wire connector on the top like that and then let's connect the power up like this. Fantastic. That is receiving power. We can then put in the dirt. We can put in the potato and then if we get two water source blocks and an aqueous accumulator we should be able to uh, to set this up basically to produce an unlimited amount of potatoes and then we can also do with a, a draw as well to store those potatoes and it's probably about time that we also start looking into uh, framed drawers as well up until now we've been using these oak drawers everywhere but i think as per usual it's gonna look a lot nicer if we get some framed drawers much like the trim the frame drawers can be made fairly easily uh, in the same way as a normal draw, but with sticks instead of planks. For that, we are going to need some planks. So boom, actually, let's get some chests like this. We'll take a stack of those because we've got a ton of wood. And then we'll do something like this, get a couple of framed drawers. And then just like with the trim, we can texture these using the, uh, the smooth stone or, or any other texture. Now, it is probably going to be better if we pick like a smoother, smooth stone texture here, potentially something like this polished smooth stone. The Twitch chat was also pointing out that this might be a better texture to use on the staircase as well, just to make that look a little bit nicer. But uh, if we do this, you can also add in secondary blocks to give like an edge texture to your drawer as well. And you can also give a tertiary block to, uh, to change the front as well, if you want to change all three of those textures. For us though, I think something like this is probably going to look just fine. And so let me quickly grab my two buckets of water. And while we're here, let's also get that aqueous accumulator. The only thing we're missing is a redstone server, which is just two redstone and one iron. And then boom, we've got the aqueous accumulator, which is now going to allow us to pump an infinite amount of water into our garden cloche. Real quick, if I shift right click here, oh, I thought I could shift right click to, to take the, um, the, the texture off the stairs. Is there like a wrench that I can use? There is a wrench. I'm going to assume that wrench allows me to take the uh, the texture block off of the staircase. I'm going to assume I don't have to break the stairs to take the texture block off. Let us... I'll give it a try over here before we go and uh, 
wander all the way back over. If I do this and this and oh, it doesn't work, eh? What about the uh, the framed hammer? Does that do what I want it to do? Thankfully, these are not too expensive. It does. Okay, cool. So we don't need the wrench. Uh, the wrench allows you to rotate, but the framed hammer is uh, is what we're after. So using the framed hammer here, we should be able to kind of detexture the stairs and then give the uh, the polished smooth stone a go here, which I think might look a little nicer. So if we did something like this, yeah, I think that is going to look a little nicer. It's just a less busy texture, which I think is going to look better given that the textures don't connect. Yeah, I think this looks a lot nicer. And so now up here, uh, I also am going to get rid of uh, this bit of wood here and have this kind of smoothly transition into uh, the other brick boarded smooth stone. But uh, over here now, we should be able to throw this aqueous accumulator down. So the aqueous accumulator just requires two water source blocks on any of its two sides. If you get that down, it will then just produce unlimited water that you can then uh, send wherever you like. So the easiest way for us to do this is going to be for us to, uh, to break underneath here. Annoyingly, we don't have the mod install that lets us build underneath. And so what we're probably going to have to do is throw down some water and then kind of go down like this to allow us to uh, to fill in this bottom section like that once we've done that we can then move the water let's say here and here that creates an unlimited water source and then we can throw down our aqueous accumulator directly under the garden cloche like that and from there in here we try to make sure that the uh oh have they changed it they might have changed it i was going to say we want to set the top to output by default it looks like that is not possible, although I could be mistaken. There might be an augment actually in the new version of thermal expansion that allows you to set this to push. Okay, so it looks like in the newer versions of thermal expansion, there's no longer side configuration on the aqueous accumulator. It used to be the case that uh, you could set this to auto eject to the top. So in order to get the fluid out of here, we've got a few options. We could get another pump like this and then put the pump on top of the aqueous accumulator and then use that to pump into the garden cloche. That would work. The benefit of adding the aqueous accumulator into that equation is that then this pump wouldn't require power. Alternatively, we could look at using something like the uh, fluid ducts from thermal expansion. However, the problem with these is that they require lead and lead is something that we don't have access to yet. However, if we push through and work our way through this uh, thermal expansion quest line, Lead is right here, and so before the end of the episode, I think we could get some lead unlocked, and then we could use that lead to get a fluid duct, which is uh, basically a pipe that's going to allow us to move water from the aqueous accumulator round to the garden cloche. I don't believe that the pipes from Immersive Engineering are going to work, these pipes right here, because the aqueous accumulator doesn't auto-eject its water. And to the best of my knowledge, the Immersive Engineering pipes cannot like do any kind of extraction, they can't actively pull anything out of the aqueous accumulator they can only be pumped into and then uh, then move fluid from there so we will push forward through thermal expansion we'll get our ore processing upgraded and then we'll come back to this before the end of the episode to see if we can't get that uh, that fully set up so let's head on back over to our network controller and let's see if we can't get at least one induction smelter and at least one pulverizer and then from there we do have to think about power as well because i believe that our windmill that we currently have isn't producing that much power. It might be producing like 35 redstone flux per tick. It's a very low amount of power being produced. And together, the pulverizer and the redstone furnace, I believe are going to use more than that on their own. And so uh, to make it here, we do need some Electrum gears. We do have a little bit of Electrum, but not a ton. Thankfully, we do have a bunch now of silver and gold. So we'll take a snack of each of that and throw it in over here again to get yet more Electrum going. While we wait for that, we need a piston for the pulverizer. We also need two flint, two copper gears, and a redstone flux coil. These are easy enough to make, and they're required for every thermal expansion machine, so I will make quite a few of them. Copper gears are, of course, going to be easy enough. We just need some copper ingots. That is not going to be a problem. Let's clear our inventory out just a little bit here, and then I'll bookmark the pulverizer and check up on the induction smelter. For this, we're going to need a blast furnace, also not a problem, along with some sand, some invar gears, and again, the same machine frame there. Invar, we have exactly four invar, which means we're going to need more invar. That is fine. We have a little bit of iron and uh, quite a lot, I think, of nickel. And so once we're done with making electrum, we can then swap that over to iron and nickel. That's going to make us some invar. And 13 electrum here is going to be enough to get us at least one induction smelter and one pulverizer. And then that's not iron, that's silver. Uh, the iron and silver in this pack look 
almost identical. They're basically the same ingot, which is uh, it's not ideal, but we'll put that back for the time being, and we'll uh, make it with the actual recipe here. We do only need eight invar to get our first induction smelter, and uh, at that point, we can then start to figure out what our uh, power situation is going to be. So over here, metal press is going to go in in place of the mm, plate mold. There we go. I'm going to put a, uh, a block back down here temporarily, just so we don't fall through that hole. And then now it's just a case of making uh, two, also trying to not get electrocuted by the wires, but uh, one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight. We need two electron gears. We then need uh, two copper and two invar. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Fantastic. One and two, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Perfect. Once all that is done, we should have, uh, if you get them onto the, the platform correctly, we should have essentially everything that we need in order to make the pulverizer and the induction smelter. And back over here, we should now be able to make two machine frames, one and two. That should be a quest complete. It is indeed. And then from there, we do need some flint, which we don't currently have. Of course, we can just go ahead and break some gravel to try and make that happen. The induction smelter there is easy enough. And then uh, gravel we do have in abundance. It's just over in our gravel drawer, which is here. Let me grab like a stack of gravel. And then using our non-existent builder's wand, I don't actually know if I have one or if I broke my entire one building stuff. I did break my entire one building stuff. Uh, we should have one bronze. We do indeed. Fantastic. And so with that, we can probably somewhat quickly do something like this and like this and hopefully get at least two flints. Never mind. There was zero flint there. Let me try that one more time. Maybe with a shovel. All right. So I broke the shovel trying to get some flint. It looks like in this pack, you cannot get flint from gravel. That's fine. Or well, you can get it from gravel, but you can't get it from gravel just by placing it and breaking it. It looks like we're going to have to use the induction smelter, which thankfully shouldn't be too difficult given that we just made it. We can here use gravel to make flint with a uh, side order of slag. So for that, we are, of course, going to have to put our induction smelter down and we're going to have to give it some form of power as well. We do still have our wire connectors and relays here, but we don't actually have any wire. So let me real quick grab some more wire out of here and then let's go see if we can't get this hooked up for now i'm going to put this in the immersive engineering area but the plan is going to be to kind of replace this jumbo furnace with one or multiple uh, induction furnaces to allow us to process all of our ores and get more for each ore for now though just to get some power going let's put it down right about here and then do this and then from there we should be able to put some gravel in here and so long as we're producing enough power which it looks like thankfully we are this uses 20 red stone flux per tick we should be able to get the two flint here required in order to make the pulverizer. I'll leave this stack of gravel in here to make some more flint because I'm almost certain that we're going to need more flint later on in the playthrough and just having it in the system is going to be easier than continually going back to the induction smelter. But now back over here, we should be able to, uh, whoops, we should be able to, uh, to craft up that pulverizer. And we can, nice. So basically now my thought process here is that we are going to uh, get rid of this jumbo furnace. Uh, to do that, we should probably grab the set of shears that we made in the last episode. These guys right here. And that should be fine. All of our ores for the time being are going to go into that chest. We're definitely going to want to work on getting... Uh, things are going to spew everywhere if I'm not careful here. Let me do this to make sure we don't lose too much. There we go. And then we'll put all of the, uh, the ores kind of back up in here. In fact, we can put basically everything back up in here. But um, but yeah, we're going to need to get one of the distributors. I forget the name of it. It is called the item router. If we get an item router here, we can use that to send all of our ingot-based ores to the induction smelter and then send all of our non-ingot-based ores, things like redstone, coal, lapis, you know, diamonds, emeralds eventually, stuff like that. They want to go over to the pulverizer. So we can move this. Thankfully, this is no longer required here. In fact, we can go and put this back on our regular old storage drawer wall over here. We could potentially even use it to, uh, to automate our kind of general use jumbo furnace over here. But for now, we'll throw it down right about there. Uh, we can also get rid of this horrendous oak trim that's just kind of sitting here. It uh, does not look good. And now it no longer has to be seen at all. And then now... We need to get those item routers to allow us to uh, to distribute these items to the correct place. And we could probably do with investing in 
another hopper and chest setup to kind of allow the uh, the items to buffer because i have a feeling that at least initially we're not going to be processing these resources fast enough with one pulverizer and one induction smelter especially if uh, if neither of those are upgraded so one item router here should do the trick the question now is where do we want to put that because right now we've got everything running to like one centralized location that's probably fine. What we could potentially do actually is still keep this centralized location, but then put another extractor on the chest here and then put the item router after that extractor and then distribute into the uh, the pulverizer and the induction smelter after like another hopper and chest setup. So my thought process here is that we can put down this guy. Obviously we need to rotate it as we always do before it will actually uh, extract, but that is fine because then we can have that go into this item router and then we can specify the green and yellow sides and uh, control where things go i am going to grab some more belts we should have quite a few of them in here we do indeed although yeah now we'll use these belts here i was going to say we could use the uh, the vertical conveyor belts those would also work because i'm thinking that we could potentially use these to kind of move diagonally downwards because right now we're, uh, we're quite high up so i think that is right if i change that like that that's correct. Perfect. Okay, so we'll get rid of you, which is uh, better done with a pickaxe, I guess. That's fine. And then we'll do the same thing over on this side. We'll do this, and then we'll uh, shift right click and rotate. Fantastic. And so now we're going to have all of, I guess, our ingot-based ores go to the green side, and all of our non-ingot-based ores go to the yellow side. And so what we're going to do is we're going to place down just some temporary blocks here and here. We're then going to place more temporary blocks here and here so that I can put one chest here i think that will feed in let me give that a try real quick if i do that that did go in fantastic okay so that's gonna go into there and then we're gonna have a hopper underneath that that goes into the pulverizer like this fantastic and then we can do the same on this side boom and then the induction smelter is gonna go there with the hopper on top and now we should be basically good to go we just need to filter the actual item router itself and then of course we're gonna put the uh, the rapid hoppers underneath the pulverizer to feed back into the draw controller slave and that should have the same effect as our current system but with much more efficiency so real quick let me empty out my inventory and then let me filter the item router with the different ores all right so i think this is configured correctly here we have gold copper nickel iron silver and aluminum going to the green side also known as the west side and we also have lapis coal and redstone going to the east side and so in theory now if we were to right click our extracting conveyor belt everything should get distributed and should go ideally to the correct place oh it's going to the top excuse me oh okay well the good news is we're at full health and so we should be able to land fairly safely perfect okay we did land basically exactly let's not die here i almost jumped right off onto the floor which i think might have killed me with half a heart of health let me uh, get a little bit of health back before we land here there we go and then uh, let me put these back in here so what's the uh, the trouble here i put like a belt down oh the belts are going up into the oh no that one's coming down but this one's going up okay let me rotate that like that that still doesn't seem to help the situation i'm surprised that it's pushing them up. If I put like oak logs on the top side, does that fix it? Nope, that just doesn't let them in. Now they just kind of buffer up. Have I not put, like, have I not given these a place to go? Is there something I forgot to put in? Let me, uh, that's silver ore. I feel like I did filter silver ore, right? Aluminum, yeah, silver ore's right there. I feel like it should be going to the green side, but it's not going to the green side. interesting let me try if i get rid of this that still doesn't fix it eh that is interesting if i get rid of this and put like i would have thought that even if there was no belt there it would just spew it out to the side if i put this here does that work it looks like that is working i think it's um pushing them backwards like the wrong way but it is working okay that is interesting i guess the um the other method didn't didn't work there that's fine um it's a, su a super janky system but 
I'm going to just get another hopper and put it on top of those chests, and that should fix our somewhat janky setup. I think the previous setup would have looked nicer, but I think if we were to just do something like this, that should basically fix the uh, the entire problem that we're currently having. And so we'll do this. We'll get rid of you. We'll, of course, put these belts back down here and here. Those are not going the right way, of course. They're not. Why would they be? There we go. And then we'll do... Not that. Wait, does that work? If I do... That does work. Interesting. Okay. That's very odd. Like, <laughs> it looks crazy. But I think that totally works. In that the item router is pushing out onto the diagonal belt. And then it's going down into the, uh, into the hopper. Let me uh, put all these oars back in together. This is a mess at the minute. But if we do this... I think this is working. Let me get rid of all of these random pillars that I've thrown down. And then let's see if this uh, if this actually works. I think it is going to work. Get rid of you. Get rid of you. And so now, I think it's working. I think stuff is being distributed correctly. I do see that tin ore is just sitting there. But then again, I might have missed tin, actually. I did miss tin. Tin is just one that I've not filtered correctly. So let me add tin to the west side there and then let's add that back into the to the mix and in theory now everything should be going to uh to the right location let me go and grab that uh, induction smelter and let's throw that down underneath this hopper right here to allow all of our um all of our ingot bearing ores to uh to do that job there's a bunch of flint you'll have to see it we'll take the thermal expansion induction smelter we'll also take our uh, wire connector and wire coil for the future and the problem now is one of power because while we could put another windmill down over here or we could try and run power from our pre-existing windmill all the way over to here i don't think either of those are particularly good solutions um i do want to get rid of this hopper as well so that we can uh, kind of just dump all of our ores back into here and have them go where they're supposed to go ideally without all of the uh, the other junk backing things up there we go fantastic but uh, yeah we need power the, this cobblestone that's going to despawn but that is fine now the option recommended in the quest book here is the magmatic dynamo also I, I make this mistake every time when you craft an item if you don't put that item into your inventory it's not going to complete the quest and so we did make the redstone flux coils but uh, we kind of crafted them here like this and then just put them in the system you have to put them in your inventory for the quest account uh, the same is true for the uh, the pulverizer and the redstone furnace also real quick there is a wrench from thermal expansion called the crescent hammer this one right here super easy to make it's an iron gear and three iron and I'm being told by the Twitch chat that I can make my ingot making setup just a little bit better if I add one more conveyor belt to it, because currently we're dropping like four iron or four copper or four electrum onto the belt, like manually, to try and get ingots. Whereas I'm being told that if I just add one more belt behind the metal press here, we should be able to use the hopper. So I believe the idea is if we do this and this, we can put in iron like that and it should feed onto the belt and then just make the gears nice because it can pump as many as it wants onto this belt whereas this belt is part of the metal press and it acts in uh, in a funky way so this allows us to kind of bulk make the gears without having to sit and babysit it and put down the exact right amount of, uh, of ingots every single time we want to make something anyway let's head back over to our Simple storage network. That's going to allow us to make the Crescent Hammer. The Crescent Hammer is uh, is just a, an easy way to move thermal expansion machines and to configure them uh, quickly. So boom. And now over here, we should be able to shift right click to pick up both the pulverizer and the induction smelter, which you'll see thankfully does retain its power as well. You'll see it's full on power from before, which is, uh, is very nice. And boom. So the quest book recommends or suggests, I guess, the magmatic dynamo, which does allow us to turn lava into power, which seems good because we do have lava being produced automatically and we could make more fairly easily. But I'm not too sure that we're producing lava fast enough to keep up with the, uh, the dynamo. And another suggestion from the Twitch chat that I think is probably going to work pretty well for us is the lapidary dynamo. This one right here is fairly straightforward to make. The only thing we're missing here is a gold ingot. And the idea behind the lapidary dynamo is that it can use gems to produce power. One of those gems is lapis, as the name would suggest, but you can also use diamonds, you can use rubies, emeralds, amethysts, sapphires, nether quartz, all kinds of stuff 
can be used in here. For us, though, Lampis is probably a good option. We've already got, as we saw earlier, about 2,000 Lampis, and we're about to start making 32 times as much Lampis as we're currently making. And so with that setup, I think the Lapidary Dynamo is kind of a no-brainer in terms of power generation for our new ore processing setup. And I'll throw a full stack of gold in here to get quite a few gold gears, just because having multiple Lapidary Dynamos would actually be quite useful. And 16 gears later, we can then make at least one, but I'm gonna go for at least two of these lapidary dynamos here. For now, we'll put one behind each machine, and then uh, we'll look at a second at uh, sending the lapis over there automatically. So if we were to do something like this and like this, we can use the crescent hammer here to rotate these to face the machines we want them to face. And then from there, we can put in lapis like this and like this, and they're gonna start to produce 40 redstone flux per tick, which is twice as much as these require. So right now, one of these would actually work to power both of these machines. And all we need to do now is in the configuration tab on the right here, we need to set the top to input. That's gonna start pulling ores down. I am hopeful that it doesn't try to pull multiple ores down. Yeah, that's gonna be a problem. Thankfully, I think there is a fix to that. I'm fairly certain that we can make an inventory lock. If we go to at thermal again. Yes, this one right here, the slot seal is what we're after. Not to be confused with the animal of the same name. This is going to allow us to lock one of our, or in our case, two of our slots so that uh, excess items don't make their way into the induction smelter, thus stopping the whole thing from working. So over here, what we can do is we can drop in the slot seal and the slot seal, and that should stop anything else getting in here other than one or at a time. Uh, you don't have to do it in the middle, by the way, you could do any of these slots, but so long as only one slot is available, only one thing can be smelted, and that is perfect. We don't have to worry about that with the pulverizer. With the pulverizer, we can just make sure the top is set to input, which is blue, and that's gonna start making the uh, the call for us. And now we just need to pump into this draw controller. Can I get this rapid hopper back without losing it to the void? The answer is yes, because thankfully we have oak trim beneath it. So we could do one of two things here. I'm also pretty sure we've got oak trim under here as well. We do. Um, we could look at getting another draw slave that would require more tech books though because you have to pay for them unfortunately um we probably don't need the rapid hopper at this point because the induction smelter and the pulverizer are not that fast but then again the rapid hoppers are not that expensive although i'm fairly certain we are out of technium i think of all flavors yeah which is not ideal so for the time being we'll, we'll kind of pivot back to regular hoppers i think they're going to do the job maybe just fine we don't have item ducts those are not in the uh, the newer versions of thermal expansion you know what no let's get more rapid hoppers the rapid hoppers i think are definitely worth it let's get some more uh, basic technium and uh and let's get at least three more rapid hoppers because the next thing i want to do is i want to try and increase the speed of the induction smelter and pulverizer to make them somewhat faster because right now we're in a situation where we're producing the ores way faster than we're processing them which is going to be a recipe for disaster right now they're backing up in here but once this draw fills up they're going to start just uh, kind of spewing everywhere which is not going to be ideal for our frame rate or for our efficiency so let me quickly get some more technium and then we'll see about uh, upgrading these machines and seven basic technium later we can go ahead and craft up three more one two and ideally three we might need one more hopper and one more block of redstone to make that happen fantastic and now we should be able to use our uh, one uh, draw controller slave here to feed everything in we could have bought another one but we're already a little light on tech books as it is so instead what i'm thinking is we can uh, basically just leave this where it was and just have two rapid hoppers like this and like this and then underneath our thermal expansion machines we can just add two more rapid hoppers for the time being like this and ideally like this nice we do need to make sure the bottom here is set to orange which is output and then you'll see all of that stuff gets uh, pulled out very quickly we are going to have to add a few more storage drawers to the wall because there are a few extra things like slag that we're going to start getting now that we uh, currently don't have space for also i could do with a few more of the uh, brick bordered smooth stone here so i can start filling in some of the holes in and around the base so let's do you 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 and you people did also point out you can press r instead of uh, f3 well uh, this isn't the right block uh, you can press R instead of um, F3A to, uh, to reload the blocks as well, which is uh, just a little bit easier to do. So, uh, yeah, you'll see things like Rich Slack here. Uh, silver Ore shouldn't be in there. Not quite sure how that made it in. Uh, also, Silver Ore is an interesting one. The good news is that running Silver Ore through the induction smelter gets us lead, I believe. 
Like I, it's going to be in the hopper, obviously, Isaac, because you don't have a draw for it. It gets us lead, but the quest book wants us to make lead dust first, this one right here. And so to do that, it recommends pulverizing silver ore to get uh, lead dust. But I think it's probably going to be easier if we just like pulverize one lead ingot like that. And then we'll put you back in, uh, in up here for the time being. Make sure, again, this is set to output at the bottom. Fantastic. And then we should hopefully from there be able to uh, pulverize this lead ore into lead dust just for the sake really of completing that quest which does of course get us another tech book fantastic and then the research paper to unlock lead here does require four lead dust that is actually fine we're gonna get four lead from the um the, the induction smelting of the silver here there's a 10 percent chance of getting that uh, sorry a 20 percent chance of getting that lead ingot and so slowly but surely we're gonna get the four lead we need to make the four lead dust to unlock lead and then get the uh, the lead ore up and running uh, for the time being though let me go ahead and get a few more storage drawers for now i'm going to continue making them out of oak when i end up like moving this and, and redoing this area i'll retexture all of these drawers for the time being though we'll do something like this as long as we have enough planks to make it happen and we'll get drawers for lead for slag and for whatever the byproduct of coal was i guess we'll find out in a second one two and three there's the slag we'll make sure that we take our key and lock it fantastic we don't want oak. Lead is fine. Let me take you out. There we go. That's the one. Sulfur is uh, is the other thing that we're getting. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, keep that brick boarded stone on you, Isaac, because you're going to need it. And now that we have lead, we do actually have the ability, as we were talking about earlier, to get those fluid ducts and get our aqueous accumulator up and running. So let's put you back in there. You'll see that we are backing up so much on, uh, on ores. In fact, before we do... I don't know how ore is ending up in here, actually. That might be just me being a, a fool about it. Uh, I'm putting stuff in by accident, but before we do anything else here, the draw controller slave is not putting stuff in this hopper, is it? I don't think that's how that works. But um, before we do that, we can make these integral components to increase the speed of our machine. You'll see here it's got a scale factor of 2x, and so putting these in does make each machine twice as fast. There is then also the reinforced integral component that has a scale factor of 3x. This one's also not too bad, but it does require two advanced technium ingots, which does make it a little bit pricey. Let me see about getting two of these first. We did make a bunch of gold gears earlier, and I believe we've also got excess invar over here. Fantastic. And so if we do one and two, we can use those to make our machines just a little bit faster. On top of that, there is also the flux linkage amplifier augment. This does require a fair bit of lead, which we currently don't have, but this increases the power usage of machines, but it also increases the, uh, the processing speed quite a bit as well. And you can put a lot more of those in than you can these uh, integral components. You can only put one of each tier of integral component into um, the machines at any given time. Putting in, uh, you'll see, putting one of these in takes us from 20 to 40 RF per tick, making it twice as fast. Putting in a second one doesn't do anything. In fact, you can't put a second one in, unfortunately. So we'll do this as well and uh, get that guy going twice as fast. And then once we have a bit more lead, we can look at getting some of the flux linkage amplifiers. And then once we have more advanced techium, we can then look at, at upgrading to the reinforced integral component. So uh, how much lead do we have? We have got five. Nice. Okay, cool. So we'll take three more and we'll pulverize those down to get the lead dust required to unlock the lead ore. Fantastic. The gravel, of course, is in here because it's a byproduct, actually, of, um, of pulverizing the coal ore. And so we are going to have to put another drawer over here down for gravel. That is completely fine. Let me grab one more oak drawer here. And boom, gravel, lock, fantastic. And so now we should be able, I think, to make this research paper, of course, as soon as we get uh, four more advanced technium. We'll come back to that in just a second. Let me put those away. Let me quickly see, uh, using the lead that we do have, if we can't get at least one fluiduct, we totally can. Uh, we then, I do believe, need a servo, which is uh, made with tin nuggets here. Cool. Uh, the attachment server here, I believe, is going to allow us to set the fluid duct to extract. So, if we come on back all the way over to our garden cloche, and we could maybe do with some torches on these stairs as well, they look a little dark. But uh, over here, we should now be able to do something. Whoops, keep forgetting about that wire. We should really insulate it. We have the, the stuff to do it. Uh, let's do this, and then let's go one and two. And then down at the bottom, if we right-click the server one, like that, we can then open the server, set it to ignore redstone signal. And look at that, it's working nice. Okay, the water is being moved. So as soon as you put the server on there, the water gets sent around into the garden cloche. 
And now this should just start working. It should begin uh, producing potatoes. And when it does, it's going to eject them to the front. I think it's only going to produce potatoes. It is indeed. Uh, so it's going to use a little bit of power and a little bit of water. And eventually it is going to produce potatoes, which are going to get put here. And slowly but surely over time, we can just come back and grab the potatoes as and we want them, cook them in our jumbo furnace, which currently is all the way on the other side of the base, to, uh, to give us hopefully a continuous source of food. Nice. Look at that. We've got two potatoes. Cool. So that is how you use the garden cloth. You can also use it to grow a uh, myriad of other things. Unfortunately, you can't use it to grow samplings. Uh, so we do still have to use the tree absorber for that. But things like wheat and potatoes and even hemp can be grown in the garden cloth, which is pretty useful. Back over here, I'm going to make some more technium, advanced technium, so we can get this uh, lead research paper unlocked. But we have run into a slight problem in that we are out of space. The good news is that you can upgrade pre-existing chests using the iron chest mod. If we make a wood to iron chest upgrade, you can then just right click that onto a normal chest and it upgrades it to iron, thus giving it more space. And on top of that, if you make an iron to gold chest upgrade, uh, and we've got enough gold, we'll make a few of these. One, two, three, they don't stack unfortunately, three and four. You can then go one, two, three and four. And now we have even bigger chests and even more space to store all of our stuff. The basic technium is becoming a lot easier for us to make now. We've got a ton of coal coke, bronze. We've got loads of copper and tin and making this is super easy with our uh, personal jumbo furnace. And then uh, clay and smooth stone are all being made automatically. Same with lapis as well. So getting half a stank of basic technium, really not a problem. Still gonna be a little trickier making the advanced technium, but probably not as bad. We can now just take lava directly out of our jumbo tank. And steel wise, I don't think we have much steel at all. I really should have got some going earlier in the episode. It might not be a terrible idea, actually, though, for us to maybe look at making a second blast furnace. The blast brick is really not that difficult to make. The only thing we're missing here is um, it's just regular brick, and we do have a ton of clay. And uh, getting a second one of these, while the first one's not that slow, we do need so much of it that I think it's going to be worth it. Just throwing a second one down, kind of on top of the first one for now. At some point in the future, uh, we are going to unlock a better way of making steel, and we also have the potential of getting the... Uh, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to throw in a full stack just at the end. I was uh, trying to cheese it, but I failed but uh, we are going to unlock the improved blast furnace as well which is going to allow us to make things just that little bit faster but for the time being i think in terms of getting a decent amount of advanced technium in a reasonable period of time doing something like this and just getting a second one down is uh, is going to be the easiest way of doing it We're also just low on iron i could maybe do with manually swapping silver for iron into the induction smelter because right now we are full you know what let me get a quick um wood to iron chest upgrade to upgrade that chest obviously the idea is that uh, eventually that chest is going to be empty. Hopefully we are able to process all of the ores faster than they're coming in. But uh, for the time being, with one induction smelter, that, uh, that might take us a little bit. Let me do something like this and like this, just to get iron coming in in case we need even more steel, which we might because we do need uh, 16 steel per advanced technium. So we need a stack of steel in order to get the four advanced technium just to get the, uh, the lead unlocked and then you know even more if we want to go further on from there. Ideally, we would get enough advanced technium to make the next tier of integral components. So ideally, we'd also get an extra four on top of that, which would be two stacks of steel. And you'll see we don't quite have two stacks of iron. So, you know, we've got a bit of a, an uphill journey. But with the iron coming in, we should be able to, uh, to make that happen. All right. So 64 aluminum plates and 32 steel gears later, I think we are basically good to make the eight advanced technium that's going to allow us to unlock lead and also to uh, speed up our induction smelters and pulverizers just a little bit. So we'll do something like this, 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 and this. That gets us the aluminum sheet metal. And then over here, do we have everything we need? We do not. We need the invar, which we have. Uh, and of course, I've just walked all the way over here, despite the fact that all of the lava bottles that I made are over this way. Let me go and <laughs> grab those again out of this chest right here. I also did temporarily, uh, I guess maybe somewhat permanently, throw down a lapidary dynamo here just to make this faster because the metal press completely ran out of power and wasn't going very fast at all. It was going painfully slowly. And so uh, I uh, threw this down to give us a bit of a, uh, a power boost there. 43 is going to be enough to make 10 ingots. We're only after eight for the time being. And so we should have enough there. Back over here. Boom. And boom. We got seven. What am I missing? I'm missing one invar ingot. I think. Yes, we do have a little bit extra in the system, boom, and boom, nice. Okay, so we've got eight of these. That should be everything for the lead book, it is indeed, and that in turn is everything that we need to actually unlock lead in the thermal section. 
Boom. So now we can get the lead fragments from the ore. That makes sense. And on top of that, can we now make these reinforced integral components? I think the answer is yes. We do need the previous tier component. We also need signalum, which you can make in the induction smelter with silver, copper, and redstone. And you do get four at a time. So let's grab some copper, some silver, and some redstone. And then we'll temporarily change. Can I rotate this hopper? No, I can't. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Uh, let's do this. And then we'll take this out and put in this. And then we'll take this out and put in this. And that should start things going. Uh, one thing, we are backing up on us at an alarming rate, which is not ideal. Uh, that's going to start making signalum for us. We do want to get, I guess, uh, 16 signalum, so we can make four signalum gears, at which point we can then just take our pre-existing integral components and, uh, and upgrade those, which is going to be great. It's going to allow us to uh, increase the speed just a little bit more. And then from there... What were we missing for the augments? Oh, we were missing lead, of course. So I'll leave that going to make quite a bit of signalum because I do also notice that it's a quest here to make signalum for the crystallizer. So I think we are going to need even more of that. For now, let's go back to ores are us. Let's turn off nickel and then let's get some more of our colored stone to break with our prospector's pick to hopefully get enough lead fragments to set up a lead miner. I'm going to assume that the lead miner probably requires the, uh, the gold frame. Oh gosh, we also got um, gold and, and silver from that, eh? That is unfortunate. Um, <laughs> I might quickly make an item trash can. I just don't really want to fill my system with these, uh, these gold and silver fragments. So the gold and the silver can just go straight into this trash can here because we really, really don't need them. We also don't really need this many um, lead fragments either. We only really need enough like, uh, lead fragments to get um, 32 lead. But uh, let's put the lead fragments away. Then let's take those out. That's 64. Perfect. That's, again, way more than we need. And then um, most of everything else here can just be thrown into the trash can. I, we, the, the system doesn't need to be uh, to be clogged like that. So uh, we'll leave that there and then we'll move you over to like here for now for the future. Perfect. Okay, so we've got the lead. We can now set up a miner for that lead. The miner does require, yeah, the tier 6 support frame. That should be fine. We have what it takes, I believe, to make... 36 of the tier 6 support frame. Uh, the only problem, that's not really a problem, is that uh, we are done with the silver and gold chapter. Uh, we're out of space after this. We've only got one more slot here for ores. We are, of course, going to have to replace uh, some of these frames here, uh, like these ones and these ones, to actually get the lead to work. But uh, once we're done with this, we're going to have to figure out where we're going to put our next miner, whether that's going up vertically or maybe going out or maybe just setting up another area somewhere. We're going to have to, uh, to put some thought into that. And boom, we have lead or hopefully being produced. And of course, we can put an extractor down to, uh, to get that going around to our oil processing system. Again, not that the oil processing system is currently fast enough to handle any of it, but let's head on over to here just as soon as we grab some of that signalum that should be backing up quite nicely in here. It is indeed. We need at least four signalum gears if we're going to get two integral components so let's take off the plate mold let's swap that out for the gear mold and then let's put in at least 16 or at least eight uh signal ingots 16 is, uh, is completely fine and yeah that should allow us to uh to upgrade our machine just that little bit and of course we got a ton of extra tech books here you'll have to see it let's take you and let's make the next tier of augments which i still don't think by the way is going to be enough to um to get these up to speed i think we're definitely going to have to set up multiple induction smelters and multiple pulverizers if we want to process the resources faster than we're currently making them. But uh, for now, uh, the baby step is to grab some potatoes and eat so that we can move quick. And then to steal back the two hardened integral components, we can then use those to upgrade like this one and, oh, we're missing Electrum. That is actually fine. Let's go gold and silver. We'll put you in over here. One thing we should also do, we could probably do with making two more of these. The reason for that is that you can actually also put these into the dynamos as well. And right now, the two lapidary dynamos, when they have lapis in them, are able to keep up with the pulverizer and the induction smelter. But as soon as we upgrade these with the reinforced integral components, we're then going to be in a situation where we need more power. And that's where the extra hardened integral components inside of the dynamos 
is going to help us out. So let us drop the reinforced integral components into here. That's going to take us up to 60 red stone flux per tick. We can then do this and this to relock those slots and get that going again. Same over here. We can put you in there to increase that power usage. And then over here, we're producing 40 red stone flux per tick. We can put in this to take that up to 80 and up to 80, at which point we can then fill these up again with lapis and we are good to go. So yeah, this is definitely not fast enough. Even with the augments here, I still don't know if it would be fast enough. Can we smelt lead in the jumbo furnace i assume the answer is yes it is a five to one which of course isn't ideal but we can make a decent amount of lead ore decently quickly just by using the fragments and once we have the fragments we can then just throw in basically all of the lead ore that we have craft a ton of it and uh, as soon as this bar gets close to full we can then just get a bunch of lead and we can then make that into lead gears, and we can also make some electron plates as well, I guess, while we're at it, just to see if the flux linkage amplifier here is going to help us. It will help us a little bit, but I think the ores are just coming in way too quickly. We can make another chest upgrade here. We can go from uh, iron to gold, but we really are just kind of kicking the can down the road. One thing we could do is we could... Um, kind of come over and just empty that chest out and throw everything into the jumbo furnace. Obviously not the most efficient way of, of handling it, but uh, would temporarily clear the backlog and give us time to uh, to increase our production. We could also go and maybe turn some of the miners off as well. That could also uh, potentially work. Now, you can put a maximum of three flux linkage amplifiers into any one machine. If we wanted to do that, we would need uh, six lead gears, which means we'd need 24 lead, which we actually have. That's perfect. So let's do uh, this. And as soon as that's done, we'll swap out the gear mold for the plate mold, and then we'll make a couple of electron plates that'll allow us to make the three flux linkage amplifiers and then we'll see how much of an impact that has on our speed one two and one more redstone server gets us to three fantastic let us throw those into the machine and let's see how much that uh, helps so currently it's using 60 redstone flux per take with all three of those it does go up to 240 which of course is too much for our lapidary dynamo but it's going pretty quickly, which is good. So you can kind of get an idea of, of how well we're doing. So if, if we look at the silver ore here, you'll see it takes 3,200 redstone flux to turn any ore, basically, into the ingot. And so we can do 3,200 divided by 240. That gets you the number of ticks that it's going to take. And then uh, if you divide that number to buy 20 it tells you how many seconds so currently it takes 0.6 seconds so about half a second to turn one silver ore into one ingot which is kind of perfect because currently with our redstone cap here we're producing one silver ore every 4.5 seconds and so if we do 4.5 divided by 0.666 that's um 6.7 so with this pulverizer we should be able to in theory process the ores from almost seven miners but definitely six miners. Right now, we have more than six miners, though. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're so close. This is actually surprisingly close to being able to burn through the backlog. The next tier of integral component is tricky. We need the Enderium one, which is, is expensive. So uh, we also need more power, of course. There are two things we could do here. We could either put down more lapidary dynamos, or we could look at making a different augment that allows the lapidary dynamo to produce more power that's the uh, auxiliary reaction chamber this one requires signal and plates silver plates and hardened glass we don't currently have any hardened glass but hardened glass is one of those things that we're close to being able to make for the time being we did make extra uh, gold gears and so getting more lapidary dynamos here should be fine let's do this and get a couple of these and let's also see if we can't get a few more of the uh, basic integral components to make this uh, somewhat plausible we do have the uh, invar in our inventory we'll do three of those now the twitch chat has pointed out that there is actually a more efficient way of doing this and that is that uh, if we let me first of all let me do this let me do this and let me do this obviously it looks super janky but it should hopefully get the job done let's do one two three and now each one of these should produce eight so we should be producing uh, 320 redstone flux per tick which is um which is good. But um, one thing we can do, uh, before I was kind of talking about whether to use the pulverizer or the induction smelter for our ingot bearing ores, but it turns out the best solution is to use both. So let me quickly just do this. If we look at uh, one of our ores here, right, iron ore, 
If you put it in the induction smelter, it's a one-to-one. -one. You get one iron ore turned into one iron ingot. If you put it in the pulverizer, one iron ore equals two iron dust, which looks good, but then I was under the impression that two iron dust equaled one iron ingot, which if you use the jumbo furnace is the case, which kind of makes this just like an induction smelter with more steps. However, if you take that two iron dust and run it through the induction smelter, one iron dust equals one iron ingot. And so by adding the pulverizer before the induction smelter, we can effectively double again the output that we're getting. And so instead of getting a 5x increase in ingots per ore, we instead get a 10x increase in ingots per ores, which is drastically more efficient. So that's something to bear in mind. What we'll probably want to do next time is potentially look at rethinking this, uh, this system a little bit, potentially in such a way where we have just more pulverizers and induction smelters. They're not particularly hard to make, and it's definitely easier to make more of these than it is to try and push the uh, the speed of one machine further than it's currently at. Like I said before, this is actually probably going to start burning through the backlog now because of the fact that not every ore has redstone capstones. For example, over here, our iron and our aluminum, they only have aluminum blocks, and the aluminum blocks produce one out of every 100 ticks, which is every five seconds, right? So slightly slower. And so factoring that in, I think we are now going to slowly but surely start burning through the backlog here if we can keep all four of these lapidary dynamos full at all times to burn through the ores. That's something else we're going to have to work on next time, is uh, automatically exporting the lapis over to here. And then, of course, that doesn't even take into consideration the fact that we do have uh, another set of ore processing that also needs to be improved as well, because we do need the lapis to be made in order to use the lapis for power and so we also need to upgrade that uh, other pulverizer as well but like i said i think next time we'll come back and uh, we'll look at just increasing the number of pulverizers and, uh, and induction smelters that we have to increase the speed but also to increase the efficiency uh, by first running our ores through the pulverizer and then putting them into the induction smelter after the fact to uh, to double the amount of output that we're getting but all of that is a problem for future isaac because for now i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this episode of techopolis 2 there